What's up, everybody? Lou from Hypocritic here on the show floor at PAX West 2024. We are here with Andrea and Andy from Woolly Games to talk about Feltopia. Thank you so much for taking some time out this afternoon. Yeah, thanks for checking out the game. <laughs> so for those who don't know, tell us about Feltopia. Feltopia is a cozy take on the arcade side scroller. It is completely made out of felt and it's animated in stop motion which I can't wait to dig into a little more because it is an incredibly unique and very striking art style. And maybe let's start there. So stop motion. Tell us a little bit about the process of, first of all, how you decided upon that art style in the first place, that production style to bring it to life in the game, and what it kind of looks like behind the scenes putting the graphics together. Sure, yeah. Well, I am a felt animator. I work in stop motion. I mostly create online social media, so it was a very natural decision for me to want to make a game using this medium and you know it's the process of making puppets with wool and animating them frame by frame and then removing the background and then Andy the lead developer will put it into the game yeah um, we uh, took about I don't know a few months to concept the game out kind of we started thinking maybe we should make a 3D game. Um, and it turned out that was pretty difficult to get the wool to look right. And one of our uh, guiding, uh, guiding principles for the game is to make it look really fluffy. Um, so we decided on the 2D side-scroller uh, um, concept because you can make a 2D game look pretty good with the, uh, with the wool. So we're started there. And it, it does look stunning in motion. It truly does. A little bit of a story and a little bit of a narrative in the world that you built. Could you tell uh, viewers a little bit more about what the game is about and, and what they can expect in terms of narrative? Sure, yeah. We wanted it to be very story driven. So we came up with a character named Skyrider, who is a magician who lives up in the clouds um, in a civilization that lives in the sky. And they ride on a Pegasus named Cumulus and uh, the land has been infected by a smog spirit. It's sort of an environmental story. And so you fly around the world as sky and you use rainbow magic to heal the creatures and the land. And it's, it's wonderful, again, in motion. Now, when you start to put some of the gameplay mechanics on top of that, again, a, a side-scrolling shooter, but with this very lush art style on top of it, how do you sort of start to merge some of those elements together? Taking some of the narrative elements, making them blend with some of the gameplay mechanics with your sheep and sort of going into a defensive mode, which you see in the demo. How do some of those elements blend together for you? Yeah, so uh, me being a you know video game developer, uh, you know, I played a lot of shooter games and things like that. Andrea comes from a very cozy, uh, beautiful, friendly art style. And so it was kind of like the perfect storm when we got together uh, because it was, we can't just make a shooter game where things blow up. We actually started there and it just felt too violent. Uh, Andrea had some like, there was some tension there. And uh, so we started playing around like, how do we make the most friendly, cute shoot 'em up ever? And uh, Andrea uh, thought of like a transformation instead of destruction. And so everything in the game is uh, transforming uh, from, you know, corrupted by the evil smog spirit back back into its original form. So that was a really fun thing to play with, sort of that tension of a, a shoot 'em up game. And somebody really in, uh, intelligently said uh, a cute 'em up. So I think that's the style of our game. That is that is fantastic, and that's got an all, on all the ads. <laughs> this is yeah. the best, cute, very adorable. Uh, now, in terms of of starting to, to have that iterative process unfold as well, where you have, you're, like you're saying, sort of refining some of these mechanics. So, well, we don't want to make it too violent. We want to, you know, go through some of these stages to refine that. What does that sort of process look like for you? Is it very sort of trial and error based? Are you kind of feeling some of that out as you go? How do you find from your perspectives you are refining the concept as you go along? Yeah, it's been a lot of trial and error and just, yeah, seeing what feels right and you know, we really didn't have a roadmap in front of us when we were making this. So, uh, you know, for instance, we, we determined that Sky Rider is actually a sheep herder. So adding the sheep element and having these cute little sheep following you that you have to protect, that was something that we added, you know, months into our game development that was not part of the original concept. But it adds so much because then we were like, well, what 
what happens when there are all these obstacles coming up from the top and it's like, oh, you need to gather your sheep together. So that's sort of like a very natural progression for the main mechanics. Right, and I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, when you see players get their hands on this, you know, again, it's a very unique art style. It's a very uh, striking presentation. What has the response been as you sort of brought it to trade shows like PAX West from people getting their hands on and experiencing the concept for the first time? Uh, most people are saying, oh, that was so cute, like stuff like that. Um, Which I did. Yeah, I think uh, we get some people say it was unexpectedly hard, but uh, we're working to, you know, in our next version, we're going to make uh, difficulty scaling. So we're going to have like cozy mode. Uh, so it's, you know, for the a lower bar, a lower barrier to entry. Yeah. And let's let's touch on that briefly. So difficulty in in something like this, especially where it may seem kind of more approachable or more fuzzy or more cozy on the surface, could you talk a little bit about finding that balance, maybe, and how you're going to you know kind of establish that as you as you kind of go along? Because yeah, it's a it's a fine line to thread sometimes, right? We've done a lot of uh, tuning to this game. Uh, thanks, Andrea. She's very uh, very. Uh, specific about what she wants to see. Um, I'm an engineer, so I just like to get the systems in place and I call it good, kind of. So it's been nice to have somebody who's like, uh, you know, done film, things for, things that are pushed out into the world big time. Um, so that's been really helpful to kind of have that, you know, like that polish element. And the difficulty scaling was a big piece of that uh, because, you know, it's like we're trying to tune it to be perfectly difficult yeah. um, and I like to see most people it's, it's been a good mix of people that can beat it on the first try our, our five minute demo um, and that's been that's been cool to see but they still say it was hard but I beat it which is like maybe that's good yeah so, and I can I can certainly echo that it was uh, challenging but not too challenging yeah, and in Port Townsend, when we showed it off to our friends, you know, there's not a lot of gamers in that crowd, and so, you know, people were dying on the tutorial, and it's like, oh no. Um, and then, you know, we play the game all the time, so it's kind of hard for us to determine how hard it should be because we're just like going through it we're so the, we're the best easily. At this game. We are. Yeah. So it seems like you get a lot of good external feedback from people Absolutely. sort of getting their hands on it and yeah. incorporating that Definitely. into it as you go. That's yeah. great. And we want this to be a kid-friendly game, so we know it has to be a bar lower in the difficulty level, but for an event like PAX where everyone here is just like passionate gamers, I think it has been a pretty good level. Fantastic. Let's let's go under the hood for a little bit. If we can talk about maybe some of the tools and technologies that you're using to bring the game in and its unique art style to life. Yeah, so the game engine we're using is Unity. Um, I've been using that for quite a while. Uh, and um, so the early on, we were trying to figure out how to get the assets into the engine the right way. Um, so we worked on getting like an asset pipeline together of uh, image processing um, and to get you know the, the edges of the, the wool to look you know perfect looking very wool very, very fibrous very fibrous that was a big deal because like what's the point if it doesn't look like it's wool so we uh, we found the right technologies to uh, you know kind of stack together to uh, process the images and then put them into the uh, engine um, and they come to me now just uh, you know a sequence of frames that I can uh, animate uh, in engine very cool now, a little bit on your background as well. You mentioned uh, some animation uh, experience and your uh, engineering experience. Bringing your own separate experiences in, in professional engagements to life here always has to be sort of interesting in how you can apply the things you know to the things you're trying to do, right? So can you elaborate a little bit more on, on some of the background and, and previous work that you've done that brought you to Feltopia as a project specifically, and what, if anything, you found interesting or informative about the process of taking what you've done to now what you're working on. Sure. Uh, so in my previous career and my current career, I uh, do a lot of felt stop motion on social media under the name Andrea Animates. I do a lot of like little tiny cooking videos with felt and a lot of fun time lapses and um, brand work. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always making big sets and animating my puppets in the set. And it's always, you know, very practical and in front of me, but this is very different because I'm 
um, animating these individual assets, just isolated frames, and then it all comes together in one beautiful game. And it's sort of, I find a, I think of it as sort of like a collage of my work because um, it's just, I've never quite seen it like that. And it's just fun because this is like an interactive version of my work, and that I've never experienced that either. So it's really gratifying. Um, so I come from a background of software engineering. Um, I started like about 10 years ago working on game dev adjacent work, uh, doing like audio production, augmented reality, things like that, but in a game engine. Um, I, I'm a software engineer at a big company now, and I do this on the, on the side. Um, for that, I had a startup uh, doing uh, augmented reality for live production. Um, so working with brands like Red Bull and Microsoft and live productions and putting in like explosive effects that are 3D. <laughs> yeah. So if players want to learn more about Feltopia, where can they go and what can they do? Uh, we are on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. It is at Feltopia underscore game. Okay, and it's um, available on Steam to wishlist. Uh... Yes, yes. Please wishlist us on Steam. We're hoping to release the game sometime in 2026. Okay, fantastic. Andrew and Andy, thank you so much for the time. That was yeah, Feltopia. Thank you. Keep it tuned here to Hypocritic for more from PAX West all weekend long.